Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for subscribing, for liking the videos that I've uploaded a couple of weeks back and also commenting. And it's just really overwhelming that in a span of one week, I was able to get 500, more than 500 subscribers. It's really insane. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. So thank you guys for all the love and support. I'm going to do my best to upload frequently, at least two videos a week. And at the same time, you know, I'm trying to improve my video and audio quality. So if you guys noticed, the sound quality is much better now and also the video because now I'm using my DSLR and a separate audio system. Unlike before, I was just using my phone to film everything. I hope that it's much better now and let me know down below at the um, comment section what you guys think of this new setup. So if you guys want to know more about what we're going to be doing today, then just keep watching. <music> So you guys probably have figured out what we're doing today and it's basically not really much. I'm just going to talk about the different wires that I'm using throughout my pieces. And the reason why I'm doing this is if you're going to follow any of my tutorials, then it would be easier for you to know what type of wire I'm using like in, in all of them if I compile it in just one video. I know that there are so many information out there on wire gauge, on types of wire, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is more of like my personal preferences when it comes to wire. And I hope that this can help you guys out. So let's start with the types of wire that you can use. Now, there are different types of wire out there. We have what we call artistic wire or craft wire. We have bare copper wire, which is this one right here in front of you. We also have sterling silver, silver plated, silver filled, aluminum, brass, etc. Like a lot of different ones. But mainly I'm using this. When I just started out, I was using artistic wire because that's the only thing that I could grab here in Dubai. But after some time, like I did my research, I asked a few people and I eventually bought some bare copper wire from Rio Grande. Rio Grande wire is really, really good. Like they have different shapes, they have different sizes that you cannot find in other online shops that I know of. And, and they are reasonably priced so if you're in a budget and you're just starting out this is a perfect thing to start with and also the fact that they ship all around the world is a plus it takes them two weeks I think to arrive to me like 10 days to 14 days from the US to the Middle East which is perfect like it's not it's not a really a long time but during the COVID pandemic it took about three weeks to arrive so they forwarded it from my account in the US and off to Dubai. Bare copper wire is your friend at this point. You can use artistic wire because it's more accessible. You can get it from your local craft store. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it anywhere. But the quality of artistic wire, I'm not really liking so much because first of all, it is mostly plated or enameled. But if you are looking for something that has color, like for example, a red wire, a black wire, or a blue wire, whichever color you want, then go for artistic wire because they have different colors and it doesn't tarnish. If you get the artistic wires from Parawire, I've never tried them myself, but um, I've seen like some videos on it and it's pretty tough so you can hammer it you can file it you can do a lot of things with it and the coating doesn't come off easily but i'm sometimes i'm a bit tough with my wire so i would rather use bare copper and then just seal it off when i'm done with the whole piece that's my wire of choice and we also have sterling silver which is a little bit more expensive than a copper wire but buying 
sterling silver and selling sterling silver later on like when you're finished like with your pieces it looks beautiful and you can price it more than copper i mean there's a lot of different ones now if you are in a budget but you want silver then you can use silver filled which i personally haven't used before but they say that the silver coating of silver filled is much thicker than plated so it lasts longer but i still prefer sterling silver over that because i would like my pieces to be pure uh, in a sense so that's the types of wire next we're going to talk about gauge now what is gauge i know like when i started out like i didn't know what gauge was like you know, people are talking about 20 gauge, 22 gauge, 16 gauge. I'm like, what the hell is that? I, I don't understand. So I asked a few people and I did my research on it. And basically, wire gauge is the measurement of the diameter of the wire. That's basically it each wire has a different gauge so you have 16 gauge which is thicker here and then we have like thin ones which would go up to 30 32 and those are really thin and we normally use that for weaving so just to simplify it the lower the number of the gauge the thicker the wire the higher the number is the thinner the gauge make sense okay so I guess let's move on to the next topic. So now let's talk about the different shapes of wire that I normally use. And there are three. The first one is a round wire. Now round wire is of course round <laughs> in shape. So it doesn't have any corners. It's completely round. This is the most common wire shape that you can find. And you can find this in like artistic wire, in any um, type of wire, you're going to see this shape. The next wire is a square, which has four corners. And this is a very special wire because you can't really find this about anywhere. Of course, in Rio Grande, you can find it, I think in Parawire as well. There are other suppliers that have this shape, but it's very unique and it's really easy to work with because if you're using this to wrap around the stone, because of the corners, it helps the stability of the, the piece. The last one that I'm using is a half round and it is a very unique shape. So there's a round side, which is this one, and there is a flat side, which is on the other side of the wire. It's right there. And this is perfect for connecting your pieces together. And it's also perfect for creating your bail. And now those are the three wire shapes that I am using. Now we're going to talk about the different hardness of wire. There are mainly three and I'm, I'm using two of those. The dead soft wire, which is soft. So it's like bendable, it's easy to work with. If you're a beginner, this is perfect for you because you know it's easier to manipulate the wire. Next is half hard, which is a little bit more tough to work with. Now, depending on the shape of your wire, it will also depend on the hardness. I find like, for example, half hard of a round is a little bit softer than a square because of its shape round wire because it doesn't have any corners it easily gets bent so i'm using both half hard and dead soft and now we're going to talk about the different sizes and their usage now normally i use a thicker wire to create my frames and if you haven't watched the previous video that i made which was about backs i used like 16 gauge wire 
Now you can use a thicker one, you can use a 12, you can use a 14. It really depends on your preference and what you're trying to make. But mainly when it comes to frames, I'm using a 16 gauge half hard. You can also use dead soft, but I find that for a beginner, it's much better to use half hard. The problem with dead soft, even though it's like thick, is that as a beginner, we tend to tug and pull a lot. We, we haven't got the motion of wrapping with our fingers. So what happens is when you wrap your wire around the frame, it gets distorted and you won't have a problem with that with half hard wire because it is a bit more stable than dead soft if you don't have half hard it's okay it's not a problem all you need to do is lightly hammer your frame so that it's a little bit hardened but like i said dead soft can be a little bit tricky to work with if you don't know how to manipulate your wires yet because if you don't wrap it you'll tend to like pull and tug and it gets wonky and things like that so this is the two wires that i use as frames you can use like a thicker frame like it's really up to you the next ones that we have here these are my base wires now i have these two right here these are not the only ones that i'm using but just to give you guys an idea so i have a 20 gauge here and a 22 gauge it can be either square it could be round it's really up to you but i use these wires as my base wires base wires are thinner than your frame wire and that would help you to manipulate or to create different shapes around your piece without it being too thick or too hard a good rule of thumb that I've just realized was if you're going to use a 16 gauge as your frame wire, then I would use something like an 18 as my first base wire, just so that there would be like not a big gap in terms of thickness. You can use like a 16 gauge frame and then an 18 gauge and a 20 gauge and even 22 if you want like those three but if you're going to use let's say an 18 gauge frame then use a 20 gauge and a 22 as your base wires i would call these my base wire or wrapping wire i have a lot and it doesn't fit in my frame uh, but i normally use 18 20 and 22 gauge for my base wires and now we're going to talk about weaving wire weaving wire is normally thinner than the rest because it's easier to manipulate it's easier to bend, you can wrap it around, and it's really good if you're you know, making coils. I am using currently a 28 gauge for my weaving wire, but you can also use a 26, you can use a 30, a 32, but for me, the 28 is like a sweet spot in terms of weaving wire. Normally we use round, not half round, but you can also use half round for coiling. If you want it to look like it has texture, but it's not too thick, then half round would be perfect. So last but not the least, I am going to show you guys my connecting wire. So I have two of these. I have an 18 gauge and I have a 22 gauge. Depending on your project, you can use either a thicker half round wire or you can use a thinner wire, but mainly I'm using an 18 gauge half round for my bale and then I am using a 22 gauge to connect wires around the frame, like if I have loose ends that I wanted closer together, because like when, you, when you're when you doing wire work, if you have curly cues and things like that, it, they tend to go away from the frame. So if it snags, it'll just destroy the whole thing. I normally use these wires to connect the frame and the base wires together so that it's a little bit more stable. And I hope that this will focus it's too it's too small for <laughs> for the camera to focus on but yeah it's right there and i guess that's about it 
So I guess that's it guys. That was my presentation of the wires that I use in my pieces. I'm gonna list down the types of wire that I have right now, the gauges, the, the, um, the sizes, and the hardness and all of that in the description box. I buy all my wire at riograndecom So this is not a sponsored video at all. They're really amazing and they don't cost that much. I hope that you guys can check them out and just look at the list that I have below. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions or whatnot, you can just leave your comment below or you can send me a DM via Instagram. My Instagram account is Mithril Arts and Jewelry. And I also have a Facebook page, which is Mithril Arts and Jewelry. And if you want to support this channel, I do have a Patreon page and the link is right below. So you guys can check it out. I do have like a couple of tiers there. I do want to give better content for you guys and it would help a lot by supporting me as an artist or supporting this channel to grow as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's quite boring because, you know, I didn't really make anything, but I just wanted you guys to know more about what I what I'm using, especially in wire. And um, yeah, that's about it. I hope I'm going to see you guys next time. I have a lot of things in store for everyone and I'm just really happy that I'm back. It was a very lonely week <laughs> of me not filming because I'm like I was I was just really itching to film but you know things happened and um, it, it just didn't work. So thankfully now everything's okay. I'm still trying to get used to this setup but hopefully like in a couple more videos or even the next video it will be much better and um, yeah that's about it. If you guys have any questions like I said you can comment or send me a DM. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, suggestions, violent reactions. Hopefully not, <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys and have a nice day.